Columbus Arch traffic, Michael Kamek, departing runway 31, via right hand departure, climbing 3000, heading north, Woodstock. some emergency maneuvers, as you probably could tell from the title of the video. I practice these regularly, but it's figured it would be fun to actually show you on camera too what it is that I do. We're going to start off with uh, some slow flight, then some stalls, then some steep turns, then I'm going to do a forced approach, then a precautionary, and then we'll come back and if the circuit is clear, we will do some emergencies in the circuit. And there's 3,000 feet. Got to get that nose down a bit more. This thing really likes to climb. So we're going to start off over in those fields. We're not going to do slow flight and stalls and stuff right here over, you know, town. So we'll go over here a little bit more and then we will begin that exercise. All right, so before you do any abrupt maneuvering in an airplane, you should always do a hazel check. A hazel is my grandma. Not really. Her name was Mildred but Mildred doesn't work for this acronym, so we've got to use HAZEL. So H stands for height. Do I have enough height to perform my maneuvers? I am 2,500 feet off the ground. I do. A stands for area. Am I in a good area to practice these maneuvers? I'm not over downtown, and there are not a lot of houses around here, so yes, I'm in a good area. S stands for secure. So secure the cockpit. Is there anything in the cockpit that if I do negative or zero Gs, is anything going to float up and bang me in the head? I mean, we've got some helmets back there. It'd be kind of ironic if one of them hat helmets flew up and hit me in the head and hurt me. Um, but whatever, I've got a pair of gloves sitting on the seat here. I've got a phone and some sunglasses. But there's nothing nothing dangerous that's going to hurt me. The cabin is secure. Uh, we have engines. We want to make sure our engine is operating in the green, and it is. All of our engine parameters are good. And then L is for lookout. We want to look out around us and make sure there aren't any actual other aircraft uh, flying close to us that we can fly into. So we start with... Looking over our shoulder, scanning the horizon, there's a really nice shot of Mount Katahdin right over there. You should have a look at that. Isn't that pretty? I should go over there and fly around that someday. All right, so checking the horizon, checking the horizon, looking around, looking for little black specks, because those would be airplanes. And then I want to look below me, which is pretty easy to do in this airplane because I can look straight down. And I want to look above me, which I can do pretty easily in this airplane so I can look straight up. The other thing I want to do is I want to check over top of my wings. So normally I would put my wing up and look over my wing, and that works just fine. I can also put my wing down and look up over my wing because I've got that skylight, right? So I just want to look all the way around, make sure there's nobody in my blind spots. So let's do some slow flight. Slow flight's pretty easy. We're going to start off with slow flight with flaps. So we're going to slow down into our flap range. That's where the needle touches the white arc. We're in the flap range, so we can now put down our flaps. We're going to use 3300 as our target altitude because we're there. And we're going to slow the airplane down to the bottom of the white arc. When you get into slow flight, the engine controls your altitude and the stick controls your airspeed. You can see I need to practice this one a little bit more. I lost 80 feet. So now I want to practice a couple of gentle turns. You should be able to turn gently in slow flight. See, my speed's coming down, so I lower the nose. Lowering the nose will bring the airplane speed back up. That's not too bad. Now I'm going to go ahead and do some slow flight with the flaps up. So let's put those flaps up gently and see what that does to the airplane. So you can see I immediately speed up, so I have to raise my nose to slow back down. And I need to bring a little bit more power out because I've got less drag now. So now it wants to climb. There we go. And then can I do a turn in slow flight with the flaps up? Let's go back to heading a north.
There we go. So yeah, how do you recover from slow flight? Well, if you find yourself in slow flight inadvertently, you want to go full power so you immediately get away from your stall speed, right? So you want to go full power and lower the nose. That gets you out of your stall range right away. That's the safest thing to do if you're in slow flight inadvertently. If you're in slow flight on purpose, you can just simply lower the nose and bring your power back up to cruise. So that's, that's fairly easy to do. Check around us. I'll do a 180 here so we don't wander too far away. And why don't we do a couple of stalls. So we got the flaps up, so we'll do power off, flaps up, stall first. So for a power off stall, you want to bring your power back to idle and keep your altitude. That means your attitude's going to change. You'll get higher and higher. Eventually you'll hit your critical angle of attack. And there's the nose falling. So you're going to recover by lowering the nose and bring full, full power back in. You don't really have to put full power in the Zenith because it wants to fly. In fact, I can't even really get it to stall very well. I just know it stalled because I'm descending. The nose kind of comes down. So there it is coming back. There's the stick all the way back. There's the stall. See how the nose just kind of fell a little bit? And then if I keep it, like, I can hold it. <laughs> so we're descending. We're in a stall. To recover, you're going to lower the nose, bring your power on, and then once you're into your white arc, you can pull back up again. So those are pretty benign. Let's see what that number was. I wasn't even looking at the number. I was just watching my cues. So there's... Oh, there's all the way back. So, like, there we go, about 20, 28 on the airspeed indicator. So let's do that with flaps in now. We'll put our flaps down, and we'll do the same thing, power off. 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, there we go, and now it starts to fall in around 21 or so. Again, adding some power and it comes right out of it. You really can't stall this plane. I'm going to bring the flaps back up unless you do an aggravated stall. It's not an aggravated stall. You do a sort of an aggressive stall. You just bring the nose up higher. Bring our power back and just kind of hold it in that climb attitude. And there's the stall. See how one wing fell first? I relax the stick pressure, let the nose come down, bring the power up, and we're flying again. Like, it's really simple. Alright, so then, power on stall. We'll do that with the flaps up. This is to simulate a takeoff stall. So you should be at full power. So we're going to go to full power and we're going to do a climb until we stall. I think you're going to be as amazed as I am whenever it finally does. So let's go full power. We're at 2,500 feet and we're going to climb. Keep the ball centered. There's 20, 19, 8, 0. I got 0 on the airspeed indicator. Holy tabernouche. There it is. <laughs> I don't know what the airspeed was because it was 0. Let's do that with the flaps down. Just for giggles. So there's 0 airspeed. We're climbing at 1,500 feet a minute. There it is. So, um, yeah, we were climbing at 1,500 feet per minute <laughs> with no airspeed. That's ridiculous. Totally going to try that again because that was fun. Coming around, looking for traffic. Uh, yeah, we'll go flaps down again. Zero airspeed. <laughs> there it is there. <laughs> so that was starting to go into a spin. I used opposite rudder to keep that from developing into a spin. 
and uh, that fixes it. So in a in a stall situation, if one wing drops, you can't use the stick. You want to use your rudder to bring the low wing back up. So if your left wing goes down, put your right foot down, and that will fix that. So I want to do that again with flaps up, just because it's so much fun. There it is. <laughs> so ridiculous. All right. Uh, let's do a couple of steep turns just for fun. We are back at 3,300. That seems to be a good number. We'll look all the way around us. We don't see anything. We're on a heading of 60. Let's come around to 60 again. shot that 45 still at 3300 I think I did feel myself going down so I'm going to try that again and I'm going to use an outside reference this time instead of this because it ticks by so fast I can't keep up with it so let's just use Mars Hill you see Mars Hill straight ahead of us there and let's do one to the right this time we'll use 3400 clear all the way around and to the right Light picture is so different from right to left. There we go. Ah, not too bad. I stayed pretty close to 3400 there all the way around, so I'm pretty okay with that. Okay, so let's do a forced landing. So we are uh, flying along, all of a sudden the engine fails. What do you do first? Get it to best glide speed, which is 55, so there's your 55, and turn towards your field. My field is right over there. I've got it in sight. We're going to come around to it, and while we are turning towards it, we're going to do a cause check. So fuel pump on, master is on, the, uh, sorry, keys are on, master is on, choke is off, fuel valve, fuel valve. There's nothing else we can check. There's my spot. I'm going to use that road down there. I've got all kinds of room. I do want to land in the opposite direction, so I'm going to cross over the field and circle down onto it. The thing about this plane is it does not glide very well, so you do not want to get far from your landing spot. Today, if my engine quit, that's where I'd land. I'd literally land on that road. I've been down close to it lots of times. I'm familiar with it, and it's close to people who I know. So they'd be able to help. Okay, so I should make a mayday call. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Uh, Xena 701, India Mike Echo Mike uh, is about a mile to the uh, west of Heartland. Engine failure. We're going to land on the road and uh, please send help. Mayday, mayday, mayday. If I had a passenger, I would do a passenger briefing, which would be keep your hands and feet off the controls, tighten your seatbelt, take sharp objects off your face, and right before we touch down, flip that latch open on your door just so it doesn't jam us in here if the fuselage buckles. So I feel like I'm really high, but I would rather be high, because I can slip to get down, than be too low and not make it. We are in our flap range, so we can put those down. That helps significantly. And we just want to miss that one tree, and then we would be golden. Easy peasy. We got her made. All right, let's power up slowly. Bring our flaps back up. Stay away from the houses. And now let's do a precautionary landing. So we're flying along and we feel like we need to land for whatever reason. So we need to pick out a spot and land there. So let's just use that same road we were just looking at because it's a good spot. First thing you want to do is evaluate the uh, the landing spot from a higher altitude and look for obstacles. There's no obstacles on either end. We're good. There's no hills. There's no mountains. There's no power lines. So what you do is you fly a circuit. 
around your spot as if it's a, a, a runway. So you're going to fly an actual circuit around it. I'll probably edit out most of the flying around it in a circle because that's boring. From this altitude, I want to observe it and see if it's a good landing spot, a good landing candidate. Is there any reason why I shouldn't land there? Is there any reason why I should? The overshoot's not awesome because there's some power lines and a tree, but that is as long as the runway is, and you guys saw how long I needed to take off, not very much. So we know that's not going to be a concern. So we'll turn our crosswind. And on this one, we're going to get down low, and we're going to observe it at a lower altitude to observe the more uh, the finer details to see if there is a pothole or to see if there is a fence running across it that we didn't see. So we bring our power back and we set ourselves up for a landing. We're not actually going to land. We're still just going to be going down the road or down our potential landing spot slowly so we can see it better. Alright, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't land there, so then we climb up and go around. I'm going to climb up on a bit of an angle here to stay away from the houses. And then we would go in and land, but there's one more thing we've got to do before we go down and land, and that is make a radio call. So we would call, it would be a pan-pan call, not a mayday call. We'd call Pan Pan, Pan Pan, Pan Pan, Zena 701, India Mike, Echo Mike, making a precautionary landing on a road uh, about a mile to the west of Heartland. Um, and then, uh, you know, give the details for the reason why, if there is, or if there are any, and then close it off with Pan Pan, Pan Pan, Pan Pan, India Mike, Echo Mike. And then I'm not going to actually go back down and land because, well, probably shouldn't land on the roads if we don't have to, right? So why don't we go back to the airport and practice a couple landings there. I think before we do though, we should do a little scoot through the fields because that's just fun. This is one of my favorite runs to do. Come down in here between the trees, down the hill, and around the corner. <laughs> so much fun. Alright, there's no playing off field today. Too much snow and mud. Let's go back to the airport. Practice some landings. Woodstock traffic, seen at 701, India Mike Echo Mike, six miles north, climbing to 1000 for 1500, inbound for landing, runway 31, Woodstock. Okay, 